this video is just a continuation of the um, first video on how to etch the board and um, we've got the board up to this stage where the copper's been etched and the black stuff on top is actually just the toner that's left over. We'll, I'll also be testing the board um, in, in this video and drilling it and showing you how to do that as well. So first off we need to get rid of the toner. So to do that I use some of these these cotton pads, um, I actually steal them off my wife, um, but yeah you just put some turpentine on that and um, and I usually just put some on the board, rub it on the board and let it sit there for a minute and then just work off a little bit at a time. I find if you, if you wipe the whole thing like this, um, the toner sometimes sticks onto the board and it makes the board go black. It's just a presentation thing more than anything else though. Um, so yeah, just, just wipe it off a little bit at a time and work your way across the board. So here's the board with the toner removed. I ended up using about five pads. It can take a bit of effort to get the toner off, so just persist with it, it'll come off. Just slowly rub it off and um, yeah, it'll, it'll turn out like that. So next thing to do, I usually test the board and I'm just checking for hairline cracks or if there are any bridges on any tracks to make sure that all the tracks are se separate and operating as they should be. Obviously once you populate the board it's harder to find if there are any errors like that on the board afterwards. So now is a good time to test it just to make sure that it's working properly. You don't have to do this, it's an optional step, I just like to make sure now that everything's okay. Of all the boards, 40 or 50 boards that I've, that I've made, I've only ever had a couple of them actually have errors on them, so it's not something that happens very often, but yeah, like I said, it's easy to find it. At this stage, if there's a problem, then later on. So you put the multimedia on continuity mode, which is what it's pointing at now, that little symbol with the diode, and you go around the board and just check that the tracks aren't touching, uh, don't have any links between them and they're functioning as they should. So if I put one lead on, on, that, on that track and then up the other end, it, sh it should do that because obviously you want a connection between those three pins, but it shouldn't beep when I touch anything surrounding it like the ground track or that track there, or that track there, or that track there, etc. So I usually just go around, just make sure that, that it's all um, functioning as it should be. One other thing you can do to test the board is to put a backlight behind the board and, and have a look over the tracks to make sure there's no cracks uh, in the tracks. Um, this is also a good thing to do once you've populated the board um, to check for solder bridges as well. Uh, I'm just using a, um, a bright light behind it. I'll just zoom out so you can see. It's just a desk lamp um, and yeah you can just physically um, check visually check that there's no there's no cracks or or bridges that way so next thing to do is to drill the board so to drill the board we use carbide bits the reason we use carbide bits is because they're more resistant to the abrasiveness of the fiberglass if you use a high a high speed metal bit it will go blunt quicker if you've only got a couple of these to do it probably won't matter but if you're going to do more than, than a couple, you probably need to get carbide bits, which you can get from electronic shops. So the the drill bit size that I usually use for pretty much all the holes is just point, point oh, uh, sorry, point 0.8 millimeter. Um, I do drill out a slightly bigger hole for a couple of components, and one of them is um, some of these diodes have a bigger a bigger lead, um, and they require a one millimeter hole uh, otherwise you're just trying to press it in it just takes forever it's just easier just to drill it out and I also drill out the um, hookup wire anywhere there's hookup wire going to the board I also do a one millimeter so I just do them I drill out all the 0 0.8 0 0.8 millimeter holes first and then go around and drill out whatever's one millimeter just to just to make it easier to put cable uh, wires through and and those um, components with the large leads on them. If you're using a drill press, you might have a drill press that doesn't go down to 0.8 millimeter, and the drill bit will just fall out the end because the chuck on it is quite large. Uh, to get around this, uh, it took me a while to work this one out, but there's actually a um, 
uh, mini chuck that you can buy that goes into into the bottom of the chuck and it will take any of the smaller sizes so if you have a if you have a drill press or you're looking to get a drill press and you're wondering how you're going to use the 0.8 millimeter drill drill bit in it you can buy one of these which will fix that problem another handy tool that I use is this sort of mini vise um, you can just put if if you're again if you're only doing a couple of these boards you can just put tape the PCB onto a bit of wood and just and just move it around under the drill bit and drill out your holes that way but if you're doing a, a if you're doing more plan on doing more than just a couple um, you can buy a little mil, um, a little mini vise like this which holds the PCB in place and you can just and you move that around underneath the the, the drill press as you're drilling so um, yeah it holds it in like that um, and it was about I think this one was about twenty dollars from um, my hardware shop so I'm going to go and drill all the holes now um, there's probably not much point me showing you had me on the actual drill press it's pretty straightforward you just drill out the holes so that's the um, board with all the holes in it um, a couple of things I thought of too uh, you don't have to use a drill press to do, to drill these out you can use a Dremel if you have a Dremel um, I just use a drill press because I also use it when I drill out the pedal enclosures as well and another thing too uh, another tip is to put a a light on the PCB as you're drilling it just make sure you can see where you're actually drilling the holes because if you drill them off center it can get a bit messy when you're soldering so it's yeah it helps to to drill them straight so that's it for the um, for the um, make your own PCB tutorials uh, I've got a few other ideas for um, pedal building and electronic tutorials so if you're interested in that sort of thing make sure you subscribe thanks for watching